and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, this morning we are uh, in what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Our Lord Jesus is teaching us from this uh, higher place. So where is, where is he exactly located? Where is our Lord Jesus? So if you, if you were to uh, do a little uh, research and find out exactly where this place is, it's referred to as the Khorazim Plateau. So now this uh, plateau, in fact, is 25 or 22 meters below sea level, but around 200 meters above the Sea of Galilee. So this is below sea level. So it's one of the lowest summits in the world. And from this lowest, lowest summit in the world, our Lord Jesus Christ is giving possibly the highest level of moral teaching that a human being can ever hope to receive. And as we just uh, immerse ourselves in these teachings of our Lord, which are also referred to, part of it is referred to as the Beatitudes. So, Beatitudes. So, if we just break that word up, it's the attitudes with which we as human beings must be. So it's these attitudes that we as human beings, as actually human beings who are in Christ, must live out and possess. This is the location of the place. Who is the person speaking? Who is this person teaching us? Our Lord Jesus. Who is our Lord Jesus? Our Lord Jesus is not one more of the prophets. He's not Jeremiah, Isaiah, or any of the other prophets. Our Lord Jesus is in fact God Almighty incarnate in this world in the form, flesh and blood of a human being. When we go through scripture, we see that God Almighty has sent his prophets to his people to teach them, correct them numerous times. But now he sends his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the person who Matthew is testifying and writing about. This holy gospel comes from our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, from the lips of God himself incarnate in this world. Which is why it's important for us to hear what he's saying and to try our best to live the way God wants us to live. Now, as Christians, as human beings, we may have many different spiritual gifts. Christians are gifted differently. Human beings are gifted differently. And God has given us those special spiritual gifts to enrich His church, to help His church to prosper. But, as Christians, we all have to follow these teachings that our Lord God is teaching us while he is seated on this mount. Because this is our commonality. We can have different spiritual gifts, but we have to practice these teachings of our Lord Jesus to be able to call ourselves Christian. Coming to verse 20, in Matthew chapter 5, our Lord Jesus says, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. On, on reading that for the first time, we could be quite intimidated. How can we be so righteous? How can we be so morally upright? But then let us go and decipher who the Pharisees were, who the scribes were. So these people were, yes, they were considered righteous by the people around them. But a lot of it was 
external but our lord jesus is talking about the heart our lord jesus is talking about your hearts your sisters and brothers my hearts and father keeps and all of us he's talking to these people about their inward attitudes their inward ways that then becomes an action in their lives there is a there is a incident that happened i i believe in the year it was 1992 if i'm not mistaken and it was somewhere in israel and among some very orthodox jews which you could maybe compare them to the pharisees of our times i mean not our times exactly 1992 is like uh, more than 20 years back or no more no it's 30 years back is it my mathematics is <laughs> sorry 30 years back so what happened there was a fire and in an apartment building complex and the fire where the the place where the fire started first uh in that apartment was a a rabbi and uh he took 30 minutes just deciding whether he's going to pick up the phone to call the fire services or not because he was so orthodox he said picking up the phone and making that call it was a sabbath day sorry i forgot to mention it was saturday the sabbath day so for the jews you could not work on the sabbath according to the laws the way they understood it you could not do any kind of work on the sabbath so picking up that phone and making that call he was deliberating is it considered work or not in the process three apartments burned down i mean i'm i'm amused about it but i'm sure it was devastating to the people there but that is the level of outward and that is the level of understanding they had about how to observe and follow the laws i have another uh, instance a story of somebody who uh, witnessed this personally a jewish lady would uh, keep keep a servant especially calling the servant on the sabbath day because if she wanted to uh, unlock her room door or the bathroom door to to open the door to go somewhere that was also considered work by her opening the door so she had a servant to open the door but then she would go through but then see what are we doing we are ultimately reaching the other room right in our heart she intended to reach the other room she reached the other room but she doesn't want to open it herself just trying to observe that i didn't do the work but i got there but she still got there so god is saying i don't want this hypocrisy i want you to be in your heart who you are you be outside the same person and as he speaks of, about righteousness here he calls us as christians to righteousness he calls us you remember to be the salt of this earth and also to be the light right and we can only do it by turning to god in prayer day in day out by receiving from god his hope his peace and also the knowledge from this holy book of how we are to live our lives dear sisters and brothers moving on here we see that in verse 21 onwards our lord jesus speaks about murder and he says what it was uh, what was spoken in the old times and let's just read it once more you shall not murder and whoever murders will be liable to judgment but i say that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire so this is what our lord jesus says about anger now he's not talking about anger uh, on on the spur of the moment somebody you know uh kind of like you know really upsets you you're angry for a brief period of time but you've forgotten about it if you apologize for your ill behavior the person has forgiven you or somebody behaves badly with you 
you forgive that person you don't hold anything in our Lord Jesus here is referring to the kind of anger where we are just not able to forgive people who love us or people who hate us have done such things to us that we are not able to forgive them and that anger is eating us up within and then that anger Satan can use to put into your mind ways to take revenge on that person and our Lord Jesus is saying that I want you to forgive I don't want you to hold on to anger I want you to reconcile with your brother so it says your brother so if anyone of us don't have brothers then we don't have to observe this right <laughs> No. Brothers here, brother here is referring to brother, sister, father, mother, your neighbor, your friends, your boss, your people who work under you. Working, the whole of us around us is referring to everyone around us. And God is saying here, Jesus is saying here, I want you to be loving. I want you to be forgiving. And I want you to rec reconcile. I want you to reconcile because first see how I am going to reconcile you to God Almighty. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to sacrifice my, my body, my, my blood my, uh, for you. I'm going to die on that cross for you so that you are reconciled to God Almighty. So when God is doing so much for us by sending his only son into this world to redeem us, he forgives us. He's asking us to use that same forgiveness that we can bring into our hearts towards those who have treated us badly. And let that anger dissipate. That's what he wants. He wants us to live a life of love. What did we read? Just a little while back in our Book of Common Prayer, the two most important commandments, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and to love your neighbor, to love your brother as yourself. So he's asking us to forgive. He's asking us to let go of that anger. Because anger within us can destroy us. And our Lord Jesus wants to have us in such a way that if, if people, uh, you all, somebody, some of us must be uh, having gardens and doing gardening and things like that. And we want the soil to be good. Only then can the tree the f give good fruit. So our Lord Jesus is saying, take out all this poison from this soil. Don't keep it, keep it, keep it. What do we put instead? We put all nourishing things into our soil, right? We don't want there to be uh, things that can create bad fruit. Anger is such a thing that can never be good if we keep it on and on in us. We have to forgive. And our Lord Jesus is telling us this about anger. Let it go. I am the Lord your God. I am seeing what is happening. I am seeing who is behaving in what way to you. And I will take care of that. So how do we get rid of our anger? We take our anger, we take our suffering, we take the pain that has been caused by the people and we leave it at the feet of the Almighty. We make a prayer and say, Father God, you take care of this, but help me to forgive. And we in turn must forgive those who have affected us, who have caused us to be angry. And here further, our Lord Jesus says, you, you are coming to my holy altar. Please come. Please, I want you to come to my holy altar. Or whatever gift you have brought, even if you haven't brought any gift, if you have brought the gift of yourself, that's most important. You have come to my altar, that's most important. And now that you have come, I want you to first remember, have you sinned against anyone? then go and seek forgiveness and then come back. Has anyone sinned against you? Then go and forgive that person and then come. 
and I'm not asking you to get into your cars right now and, and go running towards that person. But as you pray at this time, forgive that person and receive the forgiveness from that person as well. Dear sisters and brothers, this reconciliation is truly what we need to have good relationships. And God wants us to be in relationship with Him, but also in relationship with one another. And just imagine, if we keep the anger within us, can we truly go to God in prayer daily, day, day in, day out, and actually make a good prayer to God? When we are angry from within, when we are waiting, okay, I just finished the prayer, and now I get back and angry and start planning how I can do this and that to that person. We can't. We can't and God is looking at our heart and God wants you to have pure hearts, light hearts so that you can go into this world and talk about him and praise him. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we just thank you for sending your only son into this world for us. We thank you, Father, that you have given us this message of forgiveness today, this message of reconciliation. Please fill us, Father, with your grace that as we live our lives, you may be with us, you may help us to forgive. Each time somebody hurts us, may we first think of your son on the cross and how he suffered. Let us remember that suffering and let us help and that may help us, Father, to forgive those who sin against us. Let us also, in turn, Father, not be angry with people. Help us, help us, help us, help us to just allow you to take care of things. Father, let us surrender our lives more to you and depend more upon you for each and every aspect of it. And as we go into this new week, bring before us people who we can share your holy message with and at the time of sharing may you give us courage and strength to share and father we pray all these prayers in the name of your son our lord jesus christ amen, amen. we have uh, prayer cards here because, as Father Sunil was saying, the rules aren't enough. I mean, how many times have you broken the rules? Anything like me? <laughs> I have to raise both hands. <laughs> but our Lord wants the kingdom of righteousness to touch my life for his grace and love to enter in. And so this is your opportunity to put your name here on the card it'll be uh, Christine's gonna come around and just couple in a minute here and collect those cards what are we doing we're asking the righteousness of God's kingdom to touch our lives that's what I want for my life it's what Jesus wants for each of our lives is to be touched that way and it's by great God's grace entering in. And so we're going to leave the gift of ourselves. If you know of somebody that needs healing in their lives, there's a space on the back to put their first name down there. If you know of somebody that needs God's guidance in their lives, put their first name there. Bring that, that intent of righteousness the kingdom of righteousness, that it might touch their lives. And then you can place them in the, uh, in the plate as Christine brings that around. So, oh, how do you indicate that? Uh, if uh, Chris, Christine, could you uh, make, if any, hold, hold the cards up and if anybody needs cards, they can go ahead and, uh, and then come around with the plate and collect the, collect the cards? <coughs> This is an extra job. Uh, so if anybody needs, uh, 
And you used to fill out a card, so you can go ahead and you got a couple pens there, and you can anybody who needs a card, they can raise their hand. Then she's going to come around in just a minute and uh, collect those cards uh, so we can offer uh, your lives and those linked to yours here at the altar. <laughs>